Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our FRI chat hours where we're going to help answer your questions about our first year research immersion program. Just going to kind of banter a little bit while our attendees start to log on. Uh, my name is Christy Friedrichsen. I'm one of our admissions counselors at Binghamton University um, and I travel to Connecticut and Texas and I've got a wonderful group of people here to tell you all about FRI. Um, so I'm going to start our introductions uh, by allowing another admissions counselor to introduce herself. Hi there, my name is Tanya Barajas. I'm one of the admissions counselors here. Um, I work with both domestic and international students, so my territories include uh, international students in the U.S., um, students in Canada, and also in Latin America, and then I also, you know, work a lot with our, our domestic team. So I'll be helping out today on chat support. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan Fegley. I'm the director of the First Year Research Immersion Program. I'm so happy to see so many of you rolling in to get your uh, questions about the FRI program answered. Um, one thing I would like to share with you, and I'm going to share my screen right now, we've created a virtual open house web page on our website. And at this web page, you can find out more about the FRI program. We're really sad that our prospective students can't um, join us on campus this uh, semester. So instead, we created this virtual web page so that you can find out more about the FRI program. So on this web page, um, if you go to our FRI website, binghamton.edu slash FRI, and you click on virtual open house, there's a general FRI program overview video. Um, we also have a recorded Q&A panel session with four FRI students. We have um, a tour of one of our labs, and what I'll say is um, our research stream labs are dedicated to the FRI program. They've been renovated and equipped with equipment and supplies and so this gives you a view into our biofilms lab but it um, is very telling of our other labs that we have um, for the other research streams. Um, then we have research stream overview videos. Uh, there's one video for each research stream. It's two to four minutes long so you can learn about each research stream and find out um, re which research stream interests you the most. And then we also have our webinar that we did um, on March uh, 23rd available for you to view as well. So I encourage you to um, come to our virtual open house webpage, look around. Um, I'll also say about uh, two months ago now, we um, switched over to a new website. So there's lots of information about each research stream, um, about the program in general. So I really encourage you to check out um, our website. It's a really great um, resource. Hi everyone, awesome to see so many people here. Um, my name is Dr. Lua Lopez and I'm the research educator of the Ecological Genetics Research Stream. This is the newest research stream of the FRI and it plays with the interaction between the classical field of ecology and some um, state-of-the-art genetic techniques like transcriptomics and genomics. So we um, put together two things that are very important when we talk about evolution, which is the way that organisms behave and also how they are metabolism and um, all those internal mechanisms work that allows them to live together with their genetic code. So it's like a really fun research stream. We do tons of different things. We work with animals, with plants, um, and we have a brand new lab that um, was just finished last semester. So everything is state of the art. Everything is super cool, tons of new fancy toys to have lots of fun and learn a lot. Hi, I'm Tim Desmet. I'm the research educator um, in charge of the environmental visualization with Drone Stream. Ours is pretty interdisciplinary. Um, we do a lot of geology and geophysics, geography, ecology, uh, archaeology even. Um, most of our projects are environmental or humanitarian. Um, one of our projects that's gained a lot of publications um, is finding PFM1 anti-personnel landmines. Um, these guys are scattered throughout Afghanistan. A project that we're working on right now is finding these guys, TM62 uh, anti-tank mines. And these guys are located throughout Chad, Syria, all over the place. So our students are doing a lot of really cool environmental and humanitarian research. Uh, hi, my name is Wyatt Parker. I'm currently an FRI graduate assistant uh, going for my master's. I'll also largely be helping on uh, chat support. 
Hi everyone, my name is Morgan. Um, I am a sophomore here at Binghamton University, so I just finished my last semester of FRI in the biogeochemistry stream last semester. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, and I will definitely ask our panel um, some questions here in just a moment. Um, but I did want to extend another welcome now that we've got quite a bit of people on. Um, and uh, welcome to our webinar. We're really glad that you're able to tune on. Um, we're all a little disappointed that, well, very disappointed that you're not able to come to campus and check it out for yourself, especially those of you who are um, admitted to Binghamton. Congratulations. Congratulations, that's a really big accomplishment and we really wanted to see you on campus this spring. Um, but we're hoping that these uh, events uh, like this one will be able to give you um, all of the information you need uh, about Binghamton and about FRI in particular. Um, so let's see what kinds of questions um, we have. How quickly can we choose our research streams? So I guess, um, Megan, you're still there. Okay, cool. If you want to um, jump on uh, and just kind of talk about the process in general, maybe really quickly. Yeah, so I'll talk about the entire enrollment process. So um, when you are admitted to Binghamton, admission sends out invitations to the FRI program. And so many of you on this uh, webinar, I'm guessing, have received an invitation to the FRI program. Um, with that invitation to the FRI program, the next step, if you're interested in pursuing that invitation, is to fill out our FRI enrollment form, which is available at the bottom of your checklist. Um, in that form, you'll choose your top three research streams. Um, and you can do that at any time. Um, you can do that now. You can do it later. Um, and then the next step is for you to pay your Binghamton University deposit. And then once uh, May 1st hits that deposit deadline, we'll be then uh, placing students into research streams and we'll be um, trying to get students into their top three research stream choice, one of their top three research stream uh, choices. Um, but remember, there are some uh, streams that are very popular. Our neuroscience stream is our most popular, um, followed by our biomedical chemistry stream. And then our clean energy stream is also very popular because that's a stream where half of the students are from Watson School of Engineering and the other half are from um, Harper. And so in, e in that case, since each stream is limited to 30 students, it's 15 Watson students and 15 um, Harper Arts and Science uh, students. So how does the in involvement of FRI change your schedule? How um, might it be, you might not know this, separate from a normal day for a non-FRI student, being that you are both um, FRI students, um, if you can just talk about your day-to-day -day and what that entails with FRI. Oh, okay. So um, as I said, this is my first semester actually without the FRI program. Um, but so the first semester here, we just had a seminar class. It was just a two-credit class. It was two hours a week, like a normal class. We just did that. The second semester we were in the lab, which was a structured lab schedule time in our schedule. You put it right on your schedule when you're making your schedule. And then our last semester here is actually you're planning your lab time most of the time. So my group would plan when we're gonna go into the lab together, work together. So the third semester is really more of like your open time that you're planning, but the other two semesters are scheduling like a regular class. Hi, so I'm the other student. I was having some technical issues, but it's all good now. Uh, so I am a, I'm actually a senior, I'm graduating this semester. I was in the biomedical molecular anthropology stream and I'm a bio major. So for me, it really was a really great foundation and start to my career because what I wound up learning in FRI in terms of both like actual biomedical knowledge also worked really well with my classes, but also you learn how to read papers and write scientifically, which has really helped uh, me a lot moving forward. Which stream would a student feel most at home if they were interested in genetics? Uh, I would say depends on what kind of genetics uh, you're interested in uh, because I know Dr. Lopez's stream does ecological genetics mm -hmm. and uh, the stream I was in does human genetics and population level genetics. So in ecological genetics, you will work more with like wildlife, populations of animals and plants. We have a pretty strong conservation uh, focus. 
but we also work with genetically modified organisms, namely with plants, because they are really easy to maintain in the greenhouse. Um, last semester, we did some research also with uh, frogs. So you will learn all the genetic techniques um, in ecological genetics, but on the anthropological one, you will be more focused on, um, on humans. But the techniques are going to be basically the same. Molly right now is in a plant-focused lab, so... They're very it's... applicable skills. I yes. started with humans and then I actually wound up moving uh, to a professor's lab that works with Dr. Lopez. What was your favorite part of your specific stream? Uh, I would say my favorite part of my stream was getting to go into lab uh, those second and third semesters and just learn how to do all of the cool science that I feel like I always got to see in TV and movies and actually be able to do it with people who like really made me feel like I belonged in a lab. Um, you know, working with other students and our research educator, Dr. Shmoonpour, you know, there was never any feeling of like, oh, you know, you're a freshman, so we'll start you off with like the easy stuff. It was you're a freshman, you'll learn how to do this and then use it to do your own research. So that was kind of my favorite part of my stream. Yeah, I would say the favorite part of my stream was going out into the field. Um, my project, we actually went to the forest we were working on. We camped there. We did all our field work there. And then another also favorite part would be just learning all the basic laboratory skills that I gained from it that I can transfer to anything I want to do. Awesome. Okay. So um, what kind of benefits are there to being a part of the FRI program um, as a student at Binghamton University? Whoever would like to, to jump in on that one. So I'm a senior. I've been out for, for a good while. And because of FRI, I was able to get into another lab doing kind of a different type of genetics research, which was really incredible. Uh, in that lab, I conducted my own research. Um, both under a graduate student and this year as a, as a senior thesis student, which unfortunately isn't happening because classes are online, but um, it was incredible because I got to spend my summer getting paid to do research, uh, which is like totally awesome. And also for me, FRI gave me the springboard to um, get into graduate school. And I'll actually be going to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, in the fall to ironically study epidemics um, at the time that I picked it, it was not so relevant, but now it is. How does involvement in um, FRI benefit students when looking for internships in college? Is this something that uh, you, Molly, and, and Morgan have uh, found? Um, so I actually haven't been in research at Binghamton yet. I was going to start looking this semester. I've been talking to people, but this pandemic has slightly slowed that down. Um, but I did um, get accepted to a Brigham and Women's Hospital research internship that I was also supposed to do this summer that has also been put on hold, but um, I was able to explain to them how I've worked in a lab, I have all this research experience, and it really helped me get that internship. Yeah, I had a, a very similar kind of experience. Um, my first semester, uh, like, like in the middle of FRI, I was an intern at a pathology lab at a local hospital. And then after FRI, I, um, I interned at a local, or no, not a local, sorry, uh, an NGO, non-governmental organization that does relief and development work because I was able to talk about the research experience and the, um, the literature review that you do your first semester. And I actually did a literature review uh, working for them. Awesome. Excellent. If I jump in for a second too. Go ahead. Yeah, so a lot of the skills that you learn in the FRI in terms of your writing skills are actually applicable to writing cover letters that are going to help you get these. Also, uh, Dr. You know, Dr. Fegley, Dr. Lopez, people like us, you need letter writers. So you're going to get to know us better than anybody else. And so my students have gotten internships at Scripps Institute for Oceanography, uh, MIT Woods Hole Oceanography, NASA, places like that. Uh, FRI is going to help you. So just kind of, it's good. 
Megan, do you, would you like to kind of give a, um, maybe just like one or two words as far as like what each stream might mean? I know that's like a lot of work, but we did have um, a specific question about what kind of research that students do in biomedical stream. Um, and if maybe you wanted to say a couple words about the other streams too, just to give everybody an idea if they don't already know. Sure, I'm just getting my cheat sheet out so that I don't miss any streams while doing this on the fly. Um, okay, so uh, biomedical chemistry, they're looking at uh, targets for drug uh, treatment and delivery. So they are looking at diseases such as Alzheimer's and um, cancer and seeing how they can look at different proteins um, in order to increase the function and um, delivery of those drug targets. Um, then there's community and global public health. Um, this stream is good for pre-health majors, um, also students who are interested in psychology. One thing that's different about this stream is that it's a dry lab environment. So students are um, working with big data sets um, and analyzing um, the, that data, looking for different patterns um, to see if they can um, inform public health policy. And actually, because of this pandemic, um, a couple of their uh, research projects, because in the second semester where students are currently, um, this semester as FRI students in that stream, are working to develop a proposal and decide what their research project is going to be. And so they've modified from what they were had started thinking about last semester to include some COVID-19 um, aspects. So that's kind of cool. Um, then our ecological genetics, I think uh, Dr. Lopez uh, covered that pretty well. So I'll skip over that. Um, microbial biofilms in human health. Um, this is a microbial or a microbiology stream. Um, and they're looking at biofilms, which are communities of bacteria that are encased in a slime matrix. And um, that slime matrix makes those, um, that bacteria very um, resistant to antibiotics. And so they're looking at ways to combat that antibiotic resistance. Um, molecular and biomedical anthropology. Um, so here there's a big uh, genetics focus. So this is the stream that Molly was um, part of um, when she went through the FRI program. And they're looking at things like um, uh, population genetics, um, human genetics. They also have some local projects such as Lyme disease. And um, since I'm mentioning Lyme disease now, I'll also mention that um, Dr. DeSmet's uh, stream, Environmental Visualization, also has um, a Lyme disease project. Um, so if that's something of of interest, either of those streams would have um, those types of connections. Um, and then neuroscience, so in the neuroscience stream, they uh, work with a rodent uh, model, and they're looking at obsessive compulsive disorder um, and how to treat um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, then our biogeochemistry stream, so this is a stream that's good if you're interested in um, geology, biology, chemistry, environmental uh, uh, science. Um, one cool thing about this stream is that it's a combination of both uh, field work and um, in the lab work. So students go out, collect samples in the field, and then bring them back into a wet lab environment um, and analyze those samples. And this is the stream that uh, Morgan was a part of. Um, and then we have our environmental visualization with drones, which Dr. DeSmet talked about. Um, clean energy, this is the one that um, has both Harper and Watson students. So it's a combination of chemistry, physics, material science, engineering. Um, and they're looking at ways to um, harvest and store energy better, specifically looking at different components of batteries, um, solar cells, and trying to improve efficiency of those materials. Um, and they have both um, wet lab type projects and um, more recently they've had computational type projects as well. And then last but not least, our 10th stream is image and acoustic signals analysis, which is good for um, computer science and computer engineering um, students. Um, and this they're looking um, into robotics, uh, human computer interaction, acoustics and computer vision. And so they've had a variety of projects. Um, just to give a couple examples, they've um, used uh, machine learning to um, 
detect, um, to look at eye gaze and detect autism in children. They've also used um, it to uh, look, um, to uh, decipher sign language. Um, so I hope that was okay on the fly, but that gives a brief overview of each stream. Yeah, I know that was quite a lot, but thank you so much. I think that gives everybody a little bit more understanding of some of the other streams who may not be represented here. So thanks so much. Um, and just to kind of um, let everybody know, maybe they joined late. Um, Molly and Morgan, what were your streams and what are your majors? Uh, so I was in the biomedical and molecular anthropology stream and I am graduating with a BS in cell and molecular biology. Thanks. Um, I was in the biogeochemistry stream and I will graduate with a BS in biochemistry and a minor in theater dance. So you can do multiple things. Awesome. And I see, Morgan, that you had answered that question uh, about, you know, getting involved. How does this impact my experience to, to make friends and be involved in other things? So did you both want to, could you speak on that a little bit, um, kind of life outside FRI a little bit? How do they complement each other, maybe? For me, like the, the way our, our semester worked, FRI started on the very first day of classes. So some of the first people I met were my fellow FRI students. And um, they were people who like really became very good friends of mine. We're all still friends actually now. Uh, we actually had a Zoom call with my team from our last semester about a week ago, all uh, lamenting the fact that we can't see each other one last time. Um, but FRI certainly, I wouldn't say got in the way of having that like normal freshman year experience where you, you know, you meet people in your dorms and stuff for if, anything for me it added to it because I had a yet another group of people that I could I could talk to and, and get to know and being from out of state I don't I didn't know anyone coming in so FRI was really great for me because it gave me people who I knew very early in the year. Yes I would definitely agree um so I finished FRI but I still am best friends with my whole group I still talk to people in my class that I didn't even work with my group because the class just creates this environment where you know everyone. I can tell you everyone in my class name, what they're probably doing now. And I obviously, um, well, I'm still friends with them, like I said, but I didn't choose to live with them. I made other friends outside. I still live with my roommate from last year and I made other friends in other activities that I am part of. So it definitely gave me the opportunity to make another set of friends, but it also gave me time to make other friends too. So I think this is probably a question for Megan. Um, if uh, we don't return to campus, um, we have to move um, online for some things, uh, depending what the climate is, uh, you know, come August. Um, how would this program be structured? Um, so the beauty of the first uh, course of FRI is that it's a seminar type course. And so in that course, students are digging into literature, working in teams, finding out what's um, known about a topic, what's unknown, developing a research question, um, and then uh, presenting that research work at a public poster session. And so we are starting to um, develop a plan for how that could be delivered um, online. And since the students aren't in the lab yet, um, that should be um, pretty straightforward with how we can um, transition that to remote learning. How is the program structured in terms of the coursework? Um, are the courses on a letter grade? What types of assignments are um, given in order to grade students? Um, because it doesn't seem like a typical course um, that you think of if you're thinking about like introductory to chemistry or intro bio. So um, how is it different from other coursework? How is it the same? How is it kind of structured in that way? So it's, um, it's three semesters and like Megan was just saying, so even if we're not here, uh, God forbid, hopefully we are uh, next semester, it's, it's going to be fine because the first semester is a seminar. The second semester is, is when it gets really fun. You get into the lab and you actually start doing interesting things. So for me, that would be, you know, flying around drones with sensors on them and, you know, detecting landmines or archaeological features or uh, harmful algal blooms, which are, are, you know, not good for the Finger Lakes um, in terms of the economy. Uh, they're not good for the water. They're not good for the animals. Um, and the third semester, so you write a proposal in the second semester, and then the third semester you actually go out and you conduct the research. You do it yourself. 
And so I, I'm kind of there at that point as a scaffold to help you, but realistically it's on you to do the work and, uh, you know, draw the results. So, um, basically what, um, Megan and Tim just said, um, in my case, I, well, each research stream is a little bit different. Keep that in mind. So for example, the first semester is, um, the same for all of us. The second semester in my case is when you get into the lab and you get trained in all those wet lab techniques, um, and all the other techniques that you need to know to be able to do your research independently. But the way that um, I get the students trained is giving them a whole class research project. And for example, this, um, this semester, it was a collaboration with another university, with Charleston College, and we were doing a common project where we were testing how mutant uh, plants react to different types of soil pollutants. We were working with salts and we were working with um, heavy metals. So although you're getting trained, it's not a normal intro bio class, you are going to be doing research and you have to draw conclusions and you have to learn um, and you have to learn how to analyze the data. And then the third semester, you are independent and we are there as support to help you with any kind of problem that can come up the way or any moment when we have to redesign things because science is not perfect and one of the things that we learn in science is that sometimes if you don't get the results you were expecting you have to rethink things and that's part of the beauty of science that you learn how to look at things from many different perspectives. Jump back to the students now and ask them uh, a quick question. Um, so why did you join FRI? Uh, so I can go first. I joined FRI because I was between Binghamton and a pretty similar, like, large state school, and I didn't know which I wanted to go to. And actually, at my open house, I got to talk to the research educator I wound up working with, and he just kind of said what I was hoping to hear and what I was hoping for for my college experience, which was, you know, you, you get to do real research and you're asking questions people don't have an answer for. And that for me was what I wanted uh, out of like, not just my four years, but especially, you know, as, as soon as possible. And FRI gave me that. Yeah, so I was um, actually kind of the same. I was between two schools, Binghamton and UConn. And um, I remember getting my FRI acceptance letter in um, December and I had no idea what FRI was. I was like, well, let me just brush that to the side. And then I went to my open house at Binghamton in April and I was like, well, I guess it's time to kind of figure out what this is, see if it'll help me make my decision. So when I was at open house, I went to the FRI presentations and I fell in love with the program. Um, it, I never knew if I wanted to do research or what I wanted to do with my degree after. So I thought being part of this program would teach me whether research was what I wanted to do or what not. And I soon learned that I didn't want to do research, but then after finishing this program, it actually made me realize that I might now want to do research or at least have it a little bit a part of my life. Wonderful. Okay, so um, Megan, um, for this program, we have three semesters and three courses for each of those semesters. So what do those courses count for in a, a student's uh, degree? Yeah, so one thing I, I like to make sure that students are aware of is that um, the FRI program is not something that's in addition to your coursework, in addition to your degree process. It's really part of it because the courses that you take each semester count towards um, your degree requirements or your major requirements. So um, at Binghamton, we have things called general education requirements. So each student has to um, fulfill these general education requirements in order to graduate. And so our courses each semester count towards um, one of those gen eds. So the first course counts for an oral communication, 
um, gen ed, the second course counts for laboratory science, and the third course counts for composition, which is a writing requirement. Um, so students are getting those gen eds. And then in addition to that, depending on what the student's major is and which research stream they're in, they, the courses will also fulfill some major requirements. And so that may be that a course counts for a one-for-one -one swap of a course that they have to take for their major. It may be that um, the course counts for an upper level elective that they would have needed for their major. Um, but it really depends on what the major is and what um, research stream. So maybe I'll have Molly and Morgan just mention how their FRI courses counted towards their major. Uh, so for me, uh, the biomedical and molecular anthropology classes wound up counting as like upper level bio elective classes, uh, which I needed like quite a few. I don't, I have no idea how many, but it wound up counting as eight credits towards that. And it also uh, fulfilled part of the Harper College writing requirement, which for me was really helpful because I don't particularly love to write. So uh, to get that uh, C composition credit at uh, doing something that I really enjoyed doing was really fun. Um, yeah, so if I was in biogeochemistry stream, as I've said before, um, so that counted for Bio 115, which is one of the introductory bio labs, so I didn't have to take that because I was working in a lab. And then also my, you can have the biogeochemistry classes as environmental studies or I believe it's geology, so I chose mine for environmental studies, so it counted as electives for my major as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, for our research educators here, um, what do you feel are the most important learning objectives covered in the FRI program? So I think that the, the most important things are actually the general skills, so like core competencies. So not like, oh, I know how to do XRF for some technique that's an acronym. It's going to be critical uh, and analytical thinking skills, um, things like that. So that's, that's what I would say. And also um, something that I think it's very important is um, also what uh, Molly and Morgan were saying, like sometimes you don't really know if you want to do research. Maybe sometimes you think you cannot do research because you have never been exposed to it. Um, I think having the opportunity on your first year of college to figure out if this is something that you want to have as part of your life is amazing because many students realize about this way too late when um, there is no more time to get research into your um, experience, so then it's more difficult to get into graduate um, school. So having that opportunity and figuring out if this is something that you really want to have a career in, it's very, very important. And um, then what Tim said, like you're going to learn things that are not only going to help you by do, in doing research, they are going to help you in your everyday life. Like we need to be critical citizens. So you learn how to analyze information, how to read information, how to use information. You learn not only that, but you learn public speaking skills, like how you introduce yourself, how you pose yourself in front of someone else. Um, so all those things are just like unbelievably good for you um, at any aspect of your life and your professional career. I think this is a question for, for Megan and maybe for our research educators. Um, uh, so the FRI program is um, a selective program. You have to be invited to it. Um, how does this help uh, a student stand out when they're applying to graduate schools or internships um, as opposed to um, a more maybe big name or maybe even a private school? I'm going to have Tim answer this because I think he's got some good um, student success stories he can tell you about. Yeah, so actually one of my students just recently received the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program Award. So the National Science Foundation gives you $48,000 a year for three years with that award, which is pretty awesome. That student also happened to already have an offer from Columbia University that paid for his housing that paid for his tuition um, and paid for his fees and gave him a salary, a stipend, a salary of $43,000 a year. It's like insane. Yale um, gave one of my students a salary of $38,000 a year. So like, yes, um, 
coming here, um, working on the research, getting publications, that's going to help you. Yeah, so I actually am going to graduate school for something that I have never really studied. Uh, I'm a, a wet lab biologist. Uh, that's what I've done as an undergrad, and I'm switching gears over to public health and kind of large big data biostatistics. So I was told by the, the one public health professor at Binghamton that I might not be a great candidate because I haven't ever done it, but I applied anyway, and I wound up getting into uh, eight out of my 10 schools, um, including uh, half right at Columbia, half right at Yale, full right at Northwestern, um, Emory, a few others. Um, and I've chosen to go abroad uh, because how often do you get to do that? Uh, and I, I think it's largely because FRI taught me how to not only, you know, write and, and talk about myself, but also, you know, how to sit in an interview with someone who knows what they're talking about and ask questions that are thoughtful and intelligent. So FRI certainly helped me with grad school. <laughs> awesome. That's so exciting. Congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> and a wonderful success story. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay, so this is probably a question for Megan um, and anybody else who wants to jump in. Um, would it be too overwhelming to be in both the Scholars Program and the FRI Program? So the great thing about being in FRI and Scholars is that completion of the FRI program fulfills um, Scholars Year 3 requirements. And so um, it actually works out really nicely and we've had a lot of students um, participate in both programs. Um, usually about 30% of students and scholars are also in the FRI program. Um, so it, it kind of works hand in hand. Um, students are also able to delay their second and third semester scholars courses if they need to in case they need to make room for their FRI courses. Great, thank you. Um, and I think one thing, uh, being admission in admissions, one thing I can kind of weigh in on that one is um, both of these programs are designed for first year students. So you definitely have support and um, they're designed to to fit into to your, um, your coursework and to your time here as a first year student. So um, it's, you can definitely do it. Um, let's see. Okay, so if a student doesn't get into their first preference for their stream, um, they may have to join maybe their second preference or their third preference. Um, is it still worth it to be in the program if it's not necessarily the student's top choice? May I pitch in? So basically is what we were just talking about five minutes ago, like any skill that you're going to learn in any of the research streams is going to be super helpful no matter what you end up doing. Um, so keep in mind that also most of the research streams are multidisciplinary. So although I focus a lot on evolution, you're going to learn genetics that will help you working with humans. You are going to learn bioinformatics that will help you with anything because it's big data science team does also a lot of um, bioinformatics, a lot of programming. So that is already something that we overlap. So if you don't get into your first choice, you will still get the research experience and you will still learn all those professional skills that you need, all that critical thinking. And many, even many of the wet lab techniques, it's highly likely that you will be able to transfer them to some other research fields. Science right now is multidisciplinary, so we have to stop thinking about limited fields and think more about broad collaboration between all of us. That's what I will say. I'm not sure about Molly and Morgan. Did both of you receive your first choice or, yeah? Yeah, I got well, them. I was really late to putting my deposit down, so I like chose like when there was very few left, and I didn't. I originally wanted to be in biomedical chemistry, but that was full by the time I selected. So I selected biogeochemistry, and I wasn't honestly really interested in it at first, but I'm glad I stuck with it. 
Awesome. Okay, so I know um, Molly has definitely weighed in about her plans for grad school and how FRI has helped her achieve that uh, as far as uh, even interviewing and getting all those uh, acceptances and things like that. Um, and I know, Morgan, you're a sophomore. Um, what are your, your next steps? Do you kind of know what your future looks like um, as far as maybe research, maybe not research? Um, so right now my plan actually after undergrad here is to go to med school, um, but I do still want to be participating in research. So um, I am trying to look for research opportunities on campus and I think FRI will help me get that. Awesome. What sets the FRI program apart from other colleges research programs? Well, I was just going to say from like a student's perspective, I know that when I was looking at colleges applying, I never found another program such as FRI that got me in research my first year. And a lot of them you'd have to like apply like later, which I will be doing after FRI, but I now have this little bit of experience that will get me more involved into research than whether if I just went to another university and say my sophomore or junior year I had to just try to find research. I, I know when I was talking with professors after finishing FRI about getting into their labs, uh, they were all very uh, both surprised and impressed to hear that like as a sophomore, I had done things. I had presented uh, research and I knew how to you know, write a proposal and, and that's something really valuable to get you into other labs, so. A um, couple things that I'll add. Um, <clears throat> I think that there are a bunch of other first year research programs across the country and so um, prospective students may be looking into different schools and trying to decide which first year research opportunity they want to pursue. And one thing that I really think is different about FRI is that it's all student driven. So the students are working in teams, they're developing the research questions, they're uh, figuring out what protocols and experiments to use. There are no graduate students um, that are helping facilitate the work. So in some cases, when you go to a university, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with a faculty member. Um, and so you may be paired with a graduate student working with them, or you may be um, working directly with the faculty member. And it's usually the graduate student and the uh, faculty mentor that's really driving that research. Um, it may be more of a shadowing thing at first, but in FRI, the students hit the ground running and they start um, doing research on their own in their teams um, from day one. I don't know if, uh, Dr. Lopez or Dr. DeSmet wants to add to that at all. Yeah, it's, it's about getting started early. Like realistically, I didn't start conducting research when I was an undergraduate until I was a junior. I would have loved if this program existed, but alas, you know, so now I just have to run one. <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. Get your fit into all these as soon as um, you can. And also think that um, we are the research educators, but at the same time, we all have connections within the university. So there's also a really good chance that you don't end up working only with us, but you end up doing something, collaborating with other professors. So Molly works with Dr. Sobel, and he's a really good collaborator um, that I have. So one of my teams is working both with him and uh, with me. So you're gonna also get a really big perspective um, working with more people and um, it helps you also scout other opportunities that you have to do research around campus besides this. What kind of research opportunities are available outside of the FRI program? Even for those of uh, the students who may have gotten into the FRI program, what else can get, they get involved in? So I can start. Um, we have a really great undergraduate research center on campus. Um, and Molly and Morgan might be able to tell you more about it because they've probably used their services. Um, but I think that that's a great initiative that's on campus that really supports students in doing research. It helps them find research opportunities. There's um, a database, database called CROP, uh, Campus Research Opportunity 
I can't remember the P program. Uh, I don't know. Um, anyways, it's a database where students can go and look for faculty that are looking for uh, undergraduate researchers. Um, and then they also help students um, secure external uh, fellowships and scholarships. And so they help students with those applications. We've had uh, FRI students who are, have been very successful getting those external uh, scholarships and fellowships and Molly was shaking her head a lot so I'm going to let her talk next. Um, so when I was just starting my like applying to graduate school process I went to the undergrad research center at the recommendation of it may have been you uh, Dr. Fegley um, and they helped me write a personal statement and they went through different schools and different funding programs with me uh, they are absolutely incredible. You know, you can walk into their office anytime and they'll talk to you. They're fantastic. And for those who are in the FRI, um, we are also like a really good resource to help you find things. My students get tons of emails about research opportunities to do in summer. Um, I write reference letters to them and there's always also the opportunity to keep doing research with us. So for example right now I have two undergrads that they are, um, well not right now because everything is a stop, but until a few weeks ago they were continuing their research project. So you can keep doing research outside the FRI is still associated with the FRI and as Tim mentioned like students are really successful into getting funding and being able to do research during summer, for example, it's a really good period because you are full time doing research if um, if you want. So those are also things to take in, in, into account. And I post the things in crop, looking for students. So just so you know, we do that. All I have to say is paid summer internships. If you're good at something, you shouldn't do it for free. And so my students get internships with research experiences for undergrads, the NSF ones, and those pay stipends of like $600 a week. Uh, one of my students is doing one this summer, if it happens, um, in Cambodia. So yeah, lots of cool experiences that are possible. How did our current situation with COVID-19, how did that affect um, our second semester now that we're not on campus anymore? <laughs> So a bunch of my projects um, are now, instead of being mostly field work based, they're largely uh, big data and computational, which actually in the long run might actually help these students kind of get better internships and jobs in the future anyways. So, so in my case, um, we were pretty lucky because we had finished collecting data. So um, we are still holding class. Today we had a class in phylogenetics. Um, so basically what we've been doing these past weeks is doing lots of data analysis, a lot of programming. So they are learning how to do all the programming and all the big data analysis online. You don't have to specifically be in a lab to do that. So in that way, in, in my case, it did not have any kind of impact on the students' research. They keep going with it and we in fact finished today analyzing all of our results and then for the next two weeks we are going to be talking and discussing what all those results mean. So that was not such a bad outcome. All right, good to hear it. Good to hear not everything has been totally derailed. Um, okay, so does FRI help you get into um, other kind of honors programs? Uh, a student gave an example of a specific honors program that already has a base here on campus. Does anybody know um, if that kind of makes an impact? Uh, I can speak for the, there's a biological sciences honor society. And I know my participation in FRI helped me get into that. As for uh, some of the broader honor societies, I know a lot of them are very GPA based. So FRI is a class generally you do quite well in because at least for people who were taking it with me, it's a class that you are willing to devote a lot of time to because it's a class that you really enjoy. So indirectly, they help you get into honors programs. I wanted to ask everybody, um, what pieces of advice do you have for an incoming FRI student 
Okay, I'll start. I'll break the silence. Um, so my advice, if you're looking into the FRI program and trying to decide which research stream um, is of most interest to you, um, and that's really hanging up on whether or not you should do this, um, is to look through everything and find what is interest, what you're most interested in. Because I think the FRI is a great opportunity to just do a little bit of exploration. Um, like Tim said earlier, he didn't get a research opportunity until later in his um, undergraduate career. I didn't get an opportunity until second semester junior year. And then I went on to get my PhD and I felt like I was kind of being like thrown into the deep end. Um, that's not what happens with FRI students. They get that early experience and it's really a great time to explore. So even if you um, are planning on majoring in chemistry, but you're really interested in the environmental visualization stream because the types of projects that they're doing are of great interest to you, do it. Do something that is really seems interesting to you because this might be one of the only opportunities that you get to do something that you just really think is exciting and um, you think you could be passionate about. Okay, I will go next. Um, be ready to have lots of fun, but also be challenged. Step out of your comfort zone and grow a lot, not only as a researcher, but also as a person, because you're gonna meet tons of different people. You're gonna make new connections and it's going to be an amazing experience. Um, for me, I would say go in with an open mind. I joined FRI very decided that I was going to, you know, do this so that I could get into medical school. And while that's a, a pretty solid plan, it wasn't at all what I wound up doing because I was exposed to so much, as Dr. Lopez has said, you know, it, this is totally unlike anything I've ever done or since and it was great because I was exposed to a lot of new things and uh, I'd say go in with an open mind and a good attitude. Yeah I would just say um, like I said before I didn't know if I wanted to do research and I just took this opportunity um, and it taught me way more than research. Everything that will get me into other things helped me with my other classes and even made me friends so it really helps with a lot of things more than just research. Okay, um, so that is our time, and I think we answered a lot of awesome questions. Um, so thank you, everybody. Congratulations to those of you who have been admitted and have been invited to participate in FRI. Um, if not, we're so glad that you joined us, and we hope to see you in the future and talk to you soon. Um, best wishes to you and your family. Thanks so much, everybody.